Fear and Dread Translated by Bhikkhu Bodhi Thus have I heard. On one occasion the Blessed One was living at Savathi, in Jeta's Grove, an Arthur Pindaka's park. Then the Brahmin Jana Soni went to the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk was finished, he sat down at one side and said, Master Gotama, when clansmen have gone forth from the home life into homelessness, out of faith in Master Gotama, do they have Master Gotama for their leader, their helper, and their guide? And do these people follow the example of Master Gotama? That is so, Brahmin, that is so. When clansmen have gone forth from the home life into homelessness out of faith in me, they have me for their leader, their helper, and their guide. And these people follow my example. But Master Gotama, remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest are hard to endure. Seclusion is hard to practice, and it is hard to enjoy solitude. One would think the jungles must rob a bhikkhu of his mind if he has no concentration. That is so, Brahmin, that is so. Remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest are hard to endure. Seclusion is hard to practice, and it is hard to enjoy solitude. One would think the jungles must rob a bhikkhu of his mind if he has no concentration. Before my enlightenment, while I was still only an unenlightened bodhisattva, I too considered thus. Remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest are hard to endure. The jungles must rob a bhikkhu of his mind if he has no concentration. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or brahmins unpurified in bodily conduct resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their unpurified bodily conduct, these good recluses and brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, unpurified in bodily conduct. I am purified in bodily conduct. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones with bodily conduct purified. Seeing in myself this purity of bodily conduct, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or brahmins unpurified in mental conduct resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their unpurified mental conduct, these good recluses and brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, unpurified in mental conduct. I am purified in mental conduct. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, with mental conduct purified. Seeing in myself this purity of mental conduct, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, unpurified in livelihood, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their unpurified livelihood, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, unpurified in livelihood. I am purified in livelihood. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, with livelihood purified. Seeing in myself this purity of livelihood, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus, whenever recluses or brahmins who are covetous and full of lust resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being covetous and full of lust, these good recluses and brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, 
being covetous and full of lust. I am uncovetous. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones with uncovetousness. Seeing in myself this uncovetousness, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, with a mind of ill will and intentions of hate, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their mind of ill will and intentions of hate, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest with a mind of ill will and intentions of hate. I have a mind of loving kindness. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, with a mind of loving kindness. Seeing in myself this mind of loving kindness, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, overcome by sloth and torpor, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being overcome by sloth and torpor, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest overcome by sloth and torpor. I am without sloth and torpor. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, without sloth and torpor. Seeing in myself one without sloth and torpor, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, overcome with restlessness and unpeaceful in mind, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being overcome with restlessness and unpeaceful, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, overcome with restlessness and unpeaceful. I have a peaceful mind. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones with a peaceful mind. Seeing in myself this peaceful mind, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, uncertain and doubting, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being uncertain and doubting, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, uncertain and doubting. I have gone beyond doubt. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, who has gone beyond doubt. Seeing in myself one beyond doubt, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, given to self-praise and disparagement of others, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being given to self-praise and disparagement of others, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, given to self-praise and disparagement of others, I am not given to self-praise and disparagement of others. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, not given to self-praise and disparagement of others. Seeing in myself one not given to self-praise and disparagement of others, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, subject to alarm and terror, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being subject to alarm and terror, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, subject to alarm and terror. I am free from trepidation. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, 
free from trepidation. Seeing in myself this freedom from trepidation, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus, whenever recluses or Brahmins, desirous of gain, honour and renown, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being desirous of gain, honour and renown, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, desirous of gain, honour and renown. I have few wishes. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones with few wishes. Seeing in myself this fewness of wishes, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, lazy and wanting in energy, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being lazy and wanting in energy, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, lazy and wanting in energy. I am energetic. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones with energy. Seeing in myself this energy, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, unmindful and not fully aware, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being unmindful and not fully aware, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, unmindful and not fully aware. I am established in mindfulness. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, established in mindfulness. Seeing in myself this mindfulness, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, unconcentrated and with straying minds, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being unconcentrated and with straying minds, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, unconcentrated and with a straying mind. I am possessed of concentration. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones, possessed of concentration. Seeing in myself this concentration, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. Whenever recluses or Brahmins, devoid of wisdom, drivelers, resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, then owing to the defect of their being devoid of wisdom and drivelers, these good recluses and Brahmins evoke unwholesome fear and dread. But I do not resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest, devoid of wisdom, a driveler. I am possessed of wisdom. I resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest as one of the noble ones possessed of wisdom. Seeing in myself this possession of wisdom, I found great solace in dwelling in the forest. I considered thus. There are the specially auspicious nights of the fourteenth, the fifteenth and the eighth of the fortnight. Now what if, on such nights as these, I were to dwell in such awe-inspiring, horrifying abodes as orchard shrines, woodland shrines, and tree shrines. Perhaps I might encounter that fear and dread. And later, on specially auspicious nights as the fourteenth, the fifteenth, and the eighth of the fortnight, I dwelt in such awe-inspiring, horrifying abodes as orchard shrines, woodland shrines, and tree shrines. And while I dwelt there, a wild animal would come up to me, or a peacock would knock off a branch, or the wind would rustle the leaves. 
I thought, what now if this is the fear and dread coming? I thought, why do I dwell always expecting fear and dread? What if I subdue that fear and dread while keeping the same posture that I am in when it comes upon me? While I walked, the fear and dread came upon me. I neither stood, nor sat, nor lay down, till I had subdued that fear and dread. While I stood, the fear and dread came upon me. I neither walked, nor sat, nor lay down, till I had subdued that fear and dread. While I sat, the fear and dread came upon me. I neither walked, nor stood, nor lay down, till I had subdued that fear and dread. While I lay down, the fear and dread came upon me. I neither walked, nor stood, nor sat down, till I had subdued that fear and dread. There are Brahmin, some recluses and Brahmins, who perceive day when it is night, and night when it is day. I say that on their part this is an abiding in delusion. But I perceive night when it is night, and day when it is day. Rightly speaking, were it to be said of anyone, a being not subject to delusion has appeared in the world for the welfare and happiness of many, out of compassion for the world, for the good, welfare, and happiness of gods and humans. It is of me indeed that, rightly speaking, this should be said. Tireless energy was aroused in me, and unremitting mindfulness was established. My body was tranquil and untroubled, my mind concentrated and unified. Quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, I entered upon and abided in the first jahana, which is accompanied by applied and sustained thought, with rapture and pleasure born of seclusion. With a stilling of applied and sustained thought, I entered upon and abided in the second jahana, which is self-confidence and singleness of mind without applied and sustained thought, with rapture and pleasure born of concentration. With the fading away, as well of rapture, I abided in equanimity and mindful and fully aware, still feeling pleasure with the body. I entered upon and abided in the third jahana, on account of which noble ones announce, He has a pleasant abiding, who has equanimity and is mindful. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, and with the previous disappearance of joy and grief, I entered upon and abided in the fourth jahana, which has neither pain nor pleasure, and purity of mindfulness due to equanimity. When my concentrated mind was thus purified, bright, unblemished, rid of imperfection, malleable, wieldy, steady, and attained to imperturbability, I directed it to knowledge of the recollection of past lives. I recollected my manifold past lives, that is, one birth, two births, three births, four births, five births, ten births, twenty births, thirty births, forty births, fifty births, a hundred births, a thousand births, a hundred thousand births, many eons of world contraction, many eons of world expansion, many eons of world contraction and expansion. There I was so named, of such a clan, with such an appearance, such was my nutriment, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such my life term, and passing away from there, I reappeared elsewhere. And there too I was so named, of such a clan, with such an appearance, such was my nutriment, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such my life term, and passing away from there, I reappeared here. Thus with their aspects and particulars, I recollected my manifold past lives. This was the first true knowledge attained by me in the first watch of the night. Ignorance was banished and true knowledge arose. Darkness was banished and light arose. As happens in one who abides diligent, ardent and resolute. When my concentrated mind was thus purified, bright, unblemished, rid of imperfection, malleable, wieldy, steady and attained to imperturbability, 
I directed it to knowledge of the passing away and reappearance of beings. With the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, I saw beings passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior, fair and ugly, fortunate and unfortunate. I understood how beings pass on according to their actions thus. These worthy beings who were ill-conducted in body, speech and mind, revilers of noble ones, wrong in their views, giving effect to wrong view in their actions, on the dissolution of the body after death, have reappeared in a state of deprivation, in a bad destination, in perdition, even in hell. But these worthy beings who were well conducted in body, speech and mind, not revilers of noble ones, right in their views, giving effect to right view in their actions, on the dissolution of the body after death, have reappeared in a good destination, even in the heavenly world. Thus, with the divine eye, which is purified and surpasses the human, I saw beings passing away and reappearing, inferior and superior, fair and ugly, fortunate and unfortunate, and I understood how beings pass on according to their actions. This was the second true knowledge attained by me in the middle watch of the night. Ignorance was banished and true knowledge arose, Darkness was banished and light arose, as happens in one who abides diligent, ardent and resolute. When my concentrated mind was thus purified, bright, unblemished, rid of imperfection, malleable, wieldy, steady and attained to imperturbability, I directed it to knowledge of the destruction of the taints. I directly knew as it actually is. This is suffering. I directly knew, as it actually is, this is the origin of suffering. I directly knew, as it actually is, this is the cessation of suffering. I directly knew, as it actually is, this is the way leading to the cessation of suffering. I directly knew, as it actually is, these are the taints. I directly knew, as it actually is, this is the origin of the taints. I directly knew as it actually is, this is the cessation of the taints. I directly knew as it actually is, this is the way leading to the cessation of the taints. When I knew and saw thus, my mind was liberated from the taint of sensual desire, from the taint of being and from the taint of ignorance. When it was liberated there came the knowledge it is liberated. I directly knew, birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived, what had to be done has been done, there is no more coming to any state of being. This was the third true knowledge attained by me in the last watch of the night. Ignorance was banished and true knowledge arose, darkness was banished and light arose, as happens in one who abides diligent, ardent and resolute. Now, Brahmin, it might be that you think, perhaps the recluse Gotama is not free from lust, hate and delusion even today, which is why he still resorts to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest. But you should not think thus. It is because I see two benefits that I still resort to remote jungle thicket resting places in the forest. I see a pleasant abiding for myself here and now and I have compassion for future generations. Indeed, it is because Master Gotama is an accomplished one, a fully enlightened one, that he has compassion for future generations. Magnificent Master Gotama! Magnificent Master Gotama! Master Gotama has made the Dhamma clear in many ways, as though he were turning upright what had been overthrown, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost, or holding up a lamp in the dark for those with eyesight to see forms. I go to Master Gotama for refuge, and to the Dhamma, and to the Sangha of Bhikkhus. From today let Master Gotama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge for life.